Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. And I'm going to give the latest update on the weather forecast for this system because it has grown like I told you it would. going to start on Saturday as this line congeals together still, and this is bringing damage and winds, I will show you. But as this gets bigger for Saturday, it is bringing you chances for tornadoes with that also. And it is going into Sunday also as it stretches out overnight into the early morning hours bringing a big wind field with it. You can see it right there. It just looks like some strong winds pushing that through. Then it's going to get even stronger from the south. I'm showing you still have chances for the Gorilla Hail, three and four inches plus as you go through Monday. And it did grow, just like I told you it would in yesterday's video. So for Monday, while you're dealing with that solar eclipse and the cloud cover has gotten worse, you got that 15% risk. You still have it for Tuesday as well. But now it's grown into Wednesday, right where I told you yesterday it would. For Louisiana, for Mississippi, southern Arkansas, even going into Alabama, we might even see a threat for Thursday. It'd be a little bit more downgraded, but we may see it. Plus, we have a big threat for fires for today and tomorrow also. So let me go through all your latest information. If you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I do weather forecasting all year long. Make sure you click the bell to get the updates. I always put timestamps down below in the description, also by the comments. Help save you time. I put them right here on the screen as well. That way it saves you even more time. For those that has time to watch all the way through, thank you so much for your time. Hope you have a great day today. Now let's get into your video. Now I want to show you the wind gusts as well. That way you're aware of these winds because this is still a big threat. So you can see as you go for today. But you get a lot of these winds that move through. Now the orange is all the 40s. The red is the 50s. But when you go towards that pink that starts going towards 60s. We even get towards 70s, 80s, and more. So if you notice, as you go towards for tomorrow, as we get that transition, it's bringing a lot of high winds. Look at the high winds it's bringing towards the higher elevations of New Mexico. This right here is some very high winds. This is past 80 and 90. That's getting over 90 miles per hour wind gusts on that one. And that's in the higher elevations as well. All this right here, this is all 40s. This is all 40 miles per hour wind gusts with some 50s in there as you get these storms that brew through. So just keep that in mind, the red is the 50s. But you see, as you go overnight and for tomorrow, as that system congeals together, you get a lot of 50s, you even get some 60s in there. All that pink, you get some 60 miles per hour wind gusts in there. But then over here, you get the 70s, and you start getting the 80s for the higher elevation of the Rocky Mountains. For Wyoming, for Colorado, look, you even get some more yellow in there, higher elevations in Colorado. That's getting towards 80, and that's getting towards 90 right there. Very high winds coming by with this. So just be aware of that there will be some potential 90 miles per hour wind gusts coming with this system just as it gets going. This is only as you go through for today and as you go through for tomorrow as well, bringing the 40, the 50, the 60, getting the 70 and the purple on the wraparound. And that's where it's going to get to the 80 and 90. Then it's going to keep pushing to the east with the 40s and the 50s and maybe get a little bit stronger. Euro is showing it's going to pick right back up also for Thursday and Friday. Now you can see the latest update in your vorticity as you go all the way for early tomorrow morning, you start getting some banding in front of this trough and it does go overnight into Sunday as well. Just like I was showing you just now with HRRR, as far as we can see, we can see 48 hours with that. But as we go into Monday, then Monday it congeals up to some more storms. It's bringing a lot of lightning strikes, a lot of large hail potential. Also bringing up precipitation still from Pacific and the Gulf meeting together. As you go through Tuesday, it's potent for Tuesday as well. Big storms brewing up now, starting to move a little bit further to the east. And as you go towards Wednesday, Wednesday is showing a lot of vorticity in the atmosphere, a lot of updraft, a lot of rotation, bringing a lot of strong storms with this. Look at that for Wednesday morning. That's going to bring a lot of chances for that gorilla hail for Texas, Oklahoma, going to Arkansas and Louisiana as you go through Wednesday and maybe even for Thursday as well as it goes up towards the northeast and bringing all those high winds just like what I just showed you. So you can see them right here, bringing the 40, the 50, you're getting the 60. This is all together all the way until Sunday early morning when it starts expanding out. And you see where you have the 70s to 80s, you even still get those 90s just like I was showing you, the higher elevations.
But look at the 40s and the 50s start pushing out, even getting into some of the 60s in the red as this just bands out towards the east. So you can see with your relative humidity, that you get a lot of low humidity, not only for North Dakota, also for Wyoming, a little bit of Montana as well, but Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, with all those winds and low humidity, a good chance to spark up a fire. This is for today. For tomorrow, you're going to have the same issue as that pushes through, bringing in the low humidity. So not a lot of precipitation in the atmosphere. A lot of this heat and all these winds kicking in could easily spark up a fire. Be careful. So for today, you can see you do have your elevated risk in all the orange, but your critical is right here in the red. So here's your cities and states at risk for the biggest chance for fires for today. And you can see tomorrow for Saturday, it does grow in the south. The elevated in orange, but the critical in the red. Here's your cities and states at risk for the fire threat for Saturday. So you have your fire threat and all this pink. Be aware of that also over here for North Dakota, a little bit of South Dakota. You have avalanche warnings in California and all this light blue. Plus you have winter weather advisories in the purple. High wind warning and all this dark brown, just like the winds I was showing you. Now you do have the freeze warning and the frost advisory moving through. Remember those temperatures I showed you. It is going to be passing through. Then we're going to be going on a warm up. So here's your cities at risk for the severe threat for tomorrow. And we do have our chances for tornadoes. Like I showed you, we have that 2%. Here's your cities and states at risk. Now we also have that wind threat. Remember those winds I did show you. So here's your cities and states at risk for the damage of winds for Saturday. Very strong winds and your hail threat in the same areas. National Weather Service says thunderstorms and isolated large hail and severe gusts will be possible across parts of the central and southern plains Saturday afternoon and evening. Remember, this is going overnight into Sunday. And for Sunday, here's your cities and states at risk for your severe weather risk. Remember, this is overnight and early in the morning. National Weather Service has for Sunday, strong thunderstorms with marginally severe wind gusts will be possible on Sunday from the lower to mid-Mississippi Valley, eastward into western parts of the Ohio and Tennessee Valleys. Hail could also occur in parts of the mid-Mississippi Valley. And my next update will be on Sunday after Sabbath. Now you can see what your dew points for tomorrow. We do get some high 50s and very low right on the edge of 60 over here for Nebraska and a little bit for Kansas. Also for Oklahoma, it builds into northern Texas as you go through for tomorrow before it pushes further to the south. As you go late in the evening, it strengthens as it goes through Oklahoma and Kansas. Then you got overnight, all that winds that's pushing towards the east. It stays mostly southern as you go all night long into the next day for Sunday. You can also see with your cape, when you lift it, it builds up real strong right around that surface low as it goes through the evening. Mostly for Nebraska, then it builds up stronger as it goes through the evening for Kansas, Oklahoma, and northern Texas. As you get that linear line of storms and the damage and winds just Bowing that out as you go all evening. Seven o'clock really looks like one of the prime times for this storm. Then as you go through the evening, look how it lowers down when you lift in the south. But it stays with that surface low, that upper level low, as it moves overnight as you go into Sunday. This will keep your banding, keep your storms growing overnight, bring you damage and winds and chances for hail with that. And that is that banding of storms that I did show you in the beginning. And not only with the winds that's coming all the way till then, showing Monday and Tuesday is not bringing a lot of winds. That is mostly going to be your tornado threat, but mostly going to be a big hail threat. We're talking big, very large hail out of this. When do you see the latest update? But as you go Wednesday into Thursday into Friday, showing with the control member of the ensembles of the year that it will pick up on your winds. Showing it goes from 40 to 50, Gets into 60, then it goes 40, 50, all the way until the northeast, bringing a lot more damage and winds with the rest of the storm system. It's not just going to be for the beginning. This is going to be powerful all the way through. You can also see the other dynamics. So as you deal with Saturday, overnight, into Sunday, then as you go through Monday, that's where it starts lifting up. You get some strong dew points lifting. Then as you go through Tuesday, it still stays in that same area. As you start getting that second system troughing through and you start getting that low pressure building. And as you go through Tuesday and Wednesday, showing that is going to be one of the strongest days of the severe weather. And as it goes up for Thursday, 
also for Friday, showing it will linger all the way towards Friday. And you can see this on your lifts as we carry on from Saturday and Sunday on that first storm system as we go into Monday. Your cape, your lift, your food for these thunderstorms to grow really grows as you go from Monday and on, showing a lot of strong lift. So as you go through Monday, you get a lot of strong lift for these thunderstorms to really start growing, but you get a lot of heat in the South Central. This is where it really gets hot for Texas. And as you go through Tuesday, your instability gets stronger. You're going to see stronger storms forming, and it's not going to stop there. As you go from Tuesday into Wednesday, Look at that. Now you're really getting a lot of joules. Now you're getting over 4,000, almost 5,000 joules in the atmosphere. This is going to create a lot of lift. This is going to create chances for gorilla hail. Three and four inch plus. Be aware of that. Look, showing over 5,000 as you go for Wednesday and moves over. Bringing all that instability with it. And you can also see as it keeps going, it goes also up on the northern side a little bit as you go into thursday it stretches up a little bit further towards the great lakes towards ohio valley and as you go towards friday it's a little bit weaker but we got enough instability in the northeast for some possible thunderstorms as well as what's showing for thursday so i think this also could be upgraded it would be a little bit less of an event but still something's coming through. I think we got more updates coming. Monday starts raising up, getting you a lot of lightning strikes. Then as you go through Monday afternoon, a lot of lightning strikes, not only for Texas, going to Louisiana. Look how this grows for Monday. Look at this. A lot of lightning strikes, large hail for Texas, Louisiana, and it keeps growing. Now you're going overnight for Tuesday. Look at that big line of storms with all those lightning strikes. That's all going to be chances for a lot of large hail. You're going to see storm chases all down here, especially on Tuesday and Wednesday. Look at that, right over the DFW. Over 8,000 lightning strikes just in this shot. As you go through Tuesday evening, more thunderstorms, lightning coming through it. As you go later in the evening, still sticking around by the DFW, very large hail. Watch out for your cars with this and your pets. Bring your pets inside. This will hurt your pets. Large hail falling down. As you go overnight, now you're getting that strong convection pulling up. And look at all the light strikes coming from Mexico into Texas, northern Louisiana also. Look at that line of storms. That is going to be amazing. Overnight, early in the morning, everyone's still sleeping. It's still showing this after a couple of days. That is a very intense moment. Please remember that, all you in Texas. And as you go through the morning, it is still there. So late Tuesday, overnight for Wednesday is going to be very powerful. Look at this, 10 o'clock in the morning. Now it's going from Texas into Louisiana with this very large hail. Look at that big burst coming up. This is where you're getting that MCS that I've been showing, that mesoscale convective system, a big linear line of storms all rotating almost together, bringing chances for tornadoes, but bringing all this updraft, all this lift, all this growing going on in these thunderstorms. That's very dangerous. Wednesday afternoon, look at that. All the large hail going into Mississippi as well. Look at that. Wednesday night, still moving through overnight for Thursday. And this is where it goes more for Thursday. Look how it goes all the way up towards the Great Lakes. Why you get a little bit on the southern side? This don't look like a lot, but this is going to be that tail whip of this system going north. And that's where you get a lot of these water spouts pulling off the Gulf and bringing them right towards Florida, right towards Georgia for Thursday. Look at that. I think that could be upgraded as well. And Friday. A lot of storms bring a lot of chances for hail in the least. So here's your latest updates. So as you go through Monday, you still got your 15%. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. And as you go through Tuesday, it's going to move a little bit further to the south towards Houston and more into Louisiana. But here's your cities and states at risk. But you see all they have is Texas. But you can see it does have Louisiana. It's got some of Arkansas in it. And as you go into Wednesday, here it is growing into Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. So here's the cities they have at risk so far. This, I have very much confidence this will be upgraded for Wednesday. And let's not forget the storms that it's bringing. So all the way to Wednesday, it is bringing a lot of heavy rainfall. But look at this. Now it's showing just for the next five and six days, building up anywhere from two to four. Still have it over 10 inches for northeastern Texas, northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, going to Mississippi. A big hot spot, bringing a lot of chances for flooding. And as you go from Wednesday and Thursday, look how it just bursts up. 
but all this heavy rainfall and into Friday goes right towards the northeast. Bring a lot of heavy rainfall with that as well. Just be aware we are talking about some good flooding, not just for the Great Lakes, also in the south. Look at all that heavy rainfall coming. So, so far you do have a risk for flash flooding for Monday. You do have the marginal and all this green, but you have just slight risk right here for Texas, northern Louisiana, and Arkansas going into Mississippi. And this is going to grow for Tuesday. As you go through Tuesday, you have the marginal all the way from Texas all the way into Tennessee and Kentucky, southern Missouri as well. But look at a big slight risk that has grown now as we go through Tuesday. This is going to grow more. This is going to be more intense flooding. I think we'll see a moderate level next. Now some big updates for you real quick. You can see your cloud cover update. It don't come out till a little later, but I have the latest run for you now. As you go into early on Monday and as you go towards noontime, because you have it all the way from noon till 2, that you need the best chance for clouds. And look at this. It's all going to get covered so far right in the path. Plus another update. I did put it on my community tab a couple of days ago. What's going on with our hurricane season and you see that we're going as we go from june july august september october we're going to a strong la nina that's going to be less wind shear way above average temperatures and nothing really stopping these storms from growing for our hurricane season it is going to be intense matter of fact you can see the latest update from college state university this is what i posted on my community tab link in the description also so you can go read everything that they're talking about this is their biggest hurricane forecast that they ever have put out normal on average we have 13 to 14 named storms they put us all the way to 23 matter of fact their average went all the way to 27 and they just averaged it at 23 and going to above average la nina pattern very strong pattern i think it's more like 25 maybe a little more we're gonna run into a lot Plus, you can see also the days have expanded, 115 named storm days. Plus, our hurricane days are 45 now, so that has grown. Also expecting five major hurricanes. You can read all this, link in the description. Make sure you do click on the like button. Now, that has been your weather forecast. I hope this has helped you. If it has, consider leaving a like or share this to another family. Help others find out what's going on. The best thing you can practice is safety so thank you again for helping out i appreciate every single one of you now before you go on for your friday i want to talk to you real quick about matthew 24 26 through 34 very very important wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert go not forth behold he is in the secret chambers believe it not for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. Remember to follow the signs. Never believe what man tells you. There's a lot of hype out there. Stay with what's true. Stay with what's pure and honest. Remember, all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life. And your family. And forever. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Time is short. Let everybody know.